In this presentation, I'll talk about professional development. And really, as far as professional development goes, uh, the first thing is, if we are going to work in IT security, we want to make sure we have uh, the appropriate credentials to do so. So one of the ways that we do that, one of the ways we make sure we have the credentials is through industry recognized certifications, which I'm going to talk about in this presentation. Now, I think it's important for anybody who's going into the IT security field to know what these certifications are and to know a little bit about um, why you would get them and who would get them and you know which ones would be interesting for you. So most certifications are relatively new uh, and a lot of hiring organizations do not know much about them, which is another reason that we should know a lot about them. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, it, I, this has happened in IT many times where we have these certifications and uh, HR departments and hiring managers really don't know much about them. Uh, and they really kind of become buzzwords, you know, back in the, the late nineties, early two thousands, the MCSE was, you know, a certification that was revered by a lot of, I, you know, HR departments. And if you had that certification, regardless of your experience or regardless of your education, people would be offering jobs. And it was, uh, it was not good for, you know, one reason it was, it was kind of overkill was you could get that certification without really trying too hard. I mean, you could go take a boot camp to get an MCSE certification. You can go to a boot camp for 12 days or something like that, pay a little bit of money and uh, walk out with a certification and people would think, you know what you're doing. And of course, you know, in many cases they didn't know what they were doing. So, um, so things have gotten a lot better in, in the IT world with certifications. Uh, the flip side of that is sometimes IT departments look for or hiring managers and, and HR departments look for these certifications when it may not always be appropriate. We don't always have to have these certifications. Um, yeah, I remember one time I was uh, interviewing for a job and I have a master's degree in, in the field. And a uh, and this was for a uh, for a role in my field that I've had 15 years of experience and I've got a master's degree, and the uh, and the HR department was screening me for an interview, and she uh, she asked me if I had a Microsoft certification and I said no and she said well gee I, I might not be able to interview for this job that they're really looking for Microsoft certified somebody who's Microsoft certified for this role well. You know, I said to the HR woman, I said, you know, um, asking somebody who's got 15 years of experience with a graduate degree in the field uh, if they have a Microsoft certification is sort of like asking a cardiologist if they're CPR certified. Um, you know, yeah, it proves you know how to do CPR, but, you know, you would assume that a cardiologist would know how to do that without having a certification. You would trust them to be able to do something like that. So, you know, sometimes they have to think outside the box with these certifications. But again, it is important to understand what they are. Uh, the first one is ISC squared, uh, which is uh, Certified Information Systems, uh, or I'm sorry, the Information, gosh, I can't remember. It's IISSCC, which is why it's ISC squared. So it's a, it's a mouthful, the whole, the whole uh, uh, acronym. But they probably have one of the most respected IT security certifications out there, the CISSP. So CISSP is sort of the Cadillac of all IT security certifications, in, in my opinion. It seems like that's the one that most people in, um, in the higher level jobs are looking for. So this is something, now the thing is, you're taking some IT security classes in a program like this, uh, you probably won't be able to go, get right out of school and, and take the CISSP exam and get certified. You have to have a certain number of years of experience, somebody has to sponsor you, uh, you have to, and then you pass the test, you have to do uh, cert, uh, continuing education credits and things like that. So, which is one of the things that makes that a, a good certification. And then you have system security certified practitioner, which is a little bit easier to get. You don't have to have all of the experience. You don't have to, um, you know, basically you can complete a four year uh, college degree, and you can go out and take the SSCP and get certified. And then later on, you could certainly go for the CISSP uh, if you want to move up uh, with your certifications. There's a certified secure software uh, lifecycle professional. So this is a certification geared towards people who are in software development that want to ensure that they understand the principles and concepts for uh, developing and, and designing secure software systems. So it sort of integrates the 
uh, Software Development Lifecycle, or the SDLC, and talks about what you can do in, in each of those stages when you're an, analyzing and designing and implementing and testing, what you can do to ensure that you're doing so um, to support secure systems. So that's another one. And then there's Associate of ISC Squared, which is something that you can get if you're planning on getting a certification later on. Um, but again, the, the Cadillac of all of these is the CISSP. That's the one that, uh, that most people are going for. The CISSP does have various, um, I think there are 10 concentrations or 10, 10 areas with four concentrations, I think, in CISSP now. But you can concentrate on security architecture, on infrastructure, uh, policy and governance, uh, which, you know, we talked a little bit about that in the previous presentation. Um, and, and I forget the fourth one, but there are several different concentrations you can do for CISSP. Uh, the other one, another organization. So ISC Squared is an organization that administers these certifications. There's a different organization called ISACA, which has another group of certifications. Uh, CISM is Certified Information Systems Manager. CISA is Certified Information Security Auditor. And then certified, and then a CGEIT is a certification in governance and enterprise IT, uh, certified risk and information systems control, which is, I think, is a newer certification. So the thing about ISACA certifications is um, they are more geared towards auditing. Um, they're more geared towards the business side of things. Um, so they're, they're definitely more on the business sort of soft skill side of, of the IT security field. Uh, but they are also a good set of certifications. Um, they do recommend these certifications in IT security, so or for IT security people. So they they are geared towards IT security. All four of these, um, even the CISA, which kind of seems tangential to IT security, is uh, geared towards and marketed to IT security professionals. I would say that CISSP probably is more well known than the ISACA certifications. Uh, but it's certainly something worth looking into for sure. Uh, so some other certifications. There's the SANS Global Information Assurance Certification is another one. The EC Council Certified CISO is another one. CompTIA has a uh, certification called Security Plus. Um, it's not as well respected as the other certifications we talked about. It's much easier to get. Um, you could certainly, after completing this course, uh, I'm pretty confident that most of the students who take who complete this course would probably very easily pass the Security Plus course. Uh, well, this course combined with IT Security 2 would definitely prepare you for IT Security uh, or for the uh, CompTIA Security Plus. And then the Certified Computer Examiner, uh, which is more of a, of a security or forensics certification. So again, a whole bunch of different types of certifications. The thing about these certifications is, you know, you might be thinking, well, gee, I can just go out and get all those certifications. Well, you, I hope you've got a big checkbook because they're not cheap. Um, not only do you have to take the certifications and pay to take them, uh, but you have to retake them every so many years. You have to pay fees to the organization. So, for example, if you want to get an ISACA certification, you have to not only take their certifications, but you also have to pay your dues to be a member of their organization. Same thing with ISC Squared. You have to pay the dues to be a member and a fees to be a member and you have to pay the fees to take the test, and you have to pay for the continuing education. So there are costs here to be aware of. The more preferred certifications are rather expensive. So CISSP and CISA, uh, those are both uh, rather expensive certifications. Um, even experienced professionals find them difficult without some review. So it's a good idea if you're gonna spend the money to go out and take any of these exams that I talked about or certifications, um, that at the very least you, you, you probably should buy the uh, review books. Um, the textbook for this course is probably not going to cut it for some of those exams. Certainly a good place to start, um, but I would definitely recommend purchasing the official uh, exam materials. One, one thing you don't want to get stuck in is uh, buying the exams that just have the questions and answers and trying to memorize them. Um, I know a lot of people try to take the exams like that. Um, number one, it's rather disingenuous, but Number two, for some of the more difficult exams, it, it doesn't really help. <laughs> they're, they're usually pretty well uh, guarded, the questions, and uh, they tend to change a lot. So I wouldn't count on that. But it is one strategy. A lot of folks use that strategy. But again, I think it's rather disingenuous to do that. It's better if you actually know the material. Um, so 
to be successful in getting the certification, you definitely want to get your hands on these self-study guides. Usually they're available from the organizations that make those exams. They tell you exactly what to expect, what subject areas, how many questions to expect, what level of difficulty. They usually have example uh, and practice tests and things like that. Uh, you could get a hold of uh, some study partners if several folks you know are going to take the exam. It certainly makes it easier if you have people to study with. You can go to formal training programs, although I would caution you, a lot of those formal training programs are boot camps. Um, if you if boot camp is the way you want to go, then by all means, but, uh, but you do have to be careful with the boot camps. A lot of times it's more about just passing the test and not so much about understanding the material. Uh, for some of the, for two of the certifications I talked about, not two, but the two organizations, ISACA and uh, ISC Squared, they do expect you to have work experience. And that work experience will also help you pass that certification by having that work experience. And of course, you can get the training media, which are things like, uh, like these lectures that you're watching right now, only probably more professional, but you get the idea. Um, so you can certainly use those as well. So definitely, these are some good tips if you want to be successful in, uh, in studying for, preparing for, and taking those certification exams. And it's a good idea to make sure that you prepare for them so that uh, when you sit down for those exams, you can be assured that you're going to pass because they're not cheap. Uh, you don't have to pay, you know, $200, $300, maybe even $700 to take the exam again if you fail it. So you definitely want to go in prepared without a doubt. So some generic advice, and I don't want to present this as my own advice. A lot of this is from your textbook uh, that I've rehashed in the in the presentation here. But the first piece of advice that I thought was relevant is um, always remember business before technology. So a lot of us have a tendency to get lost in the technology. Um, when I talk, when I do, when I, I you know I periodically teach an intro to computers class, and in intro to computers, we always talk about the different parts of a computer, and I, I always talk about a fish tank. And I tell my students that a computer is like a fish tank. And the first thing I ask them is, why do you have a fish tank? Uh, and most students say, well, because we want the fish. And the question about computers is, why do we have computers? We have it for the applications and for the, the task that it does for us. You know, none of us go scrambling out to the store to buy a the fancy new smartphone because we want a fancy new smartphone. What we want is the ability to check our email the ability to use social media, to take pictures, and all of those applications that we use on the phone. Having that better, fancier, faster technology just makes that better and easier. But we don't just get technology for the heck of it. Um, gosh, years ago, I remember, uh, you know, because when I talk about that fish tank, I talk about how the tank is the hardware and the water is like an operating system and your filter is like the utilities and then the fish is the applications. And we don't go out and buy a fish tank that has a fancy filter and the best water, uh, you know, and a, and a big glass tank because we want to look at an empty tank. We buy all that stuff and we get all that stuff so we have a pretty fish to look at. Um, and it's funny because I remember when, I, you know, years ago in the 90s, it wasn't uncommon when Windows released a new operating system, you would have these lines at CompUSA, if anyone remembers, you know, those stores like CompUSA. You'd have lines that would form for a day or two before the release of Windows 95 or Windows 98 or Windows ME. And people would clamor to buy these new operating systems. And of course, this doesn't happen anymore. We've all kind of wised up, I think, um, that, you know, these things are just tools. Uh, you know, system software is just a tool. So um, just because there's a fancy tool out there doesn't mean that we need it. We have to think about the business use first. Technology provides elegant solutions for some problems, but can exacerbate other problems. So again, this kind of relates to the first point that we always want to think about uh, how technology is going to help us, but we don't want to create more problems for ourselves with technology. Um, so certainly something to think about. Never lose sight of your goal, which is protection. So the goal is to protect data. That's the, uh, the number one goal for IT security. It's the CIA, actually, I should say. Protection which uh, I would say is the CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Be heard and not seen. So what your book means by be heard and not seen is you want to, um, you don't want to be in the way. You don't want people to always have to be aware of your presence. You're kind of in the background. And as far as being heard, uh, that means that occasionally they're hearing from you because you're giving them awareness training or you're sending alerts and updates and things like that. Uh, that are useful, but you're not seen as being in the way. So be heard and not seen. 
Know more than you say, be more skillful than you let on. So don't brag, don't boast. And this is probably good, good advice for in any career area, but especially in IT security, because you know, if you present yourself as as a as an Uber expert that knows everything, there's always going to be some guy or some woman who who actually does know a little more than you and is going to show you up and you know put you in your place. So uh, in IT security, sometimes that's not good. Sometimes it's better when people think we're a little bit inept as opposed to uh, you know uh, a Jedi Knight of of uh, of IT security because. Um, you know, they'll, they're not going to overestimate our, our skills or underestimate our skills, rather. So it's, again, no more than you say. Be more skillful than you let on. There's certainly lots of good reasons to be like that in IT security. Speak to users and not at them. Um, you know, one of the things I find myself doing all the time is using the vernacular, using industry vernacular with people that don't work in our field. And they don't understand what I'm saying. And it, it's, it's not a very effective way of communicating. Um, one of the old jokes in IT is we have a lot of TLAs. A TLA is a three-letter acronym. We also have ETLAs, which are extended three-letter acronyms. Uh, and there's the joke. But um, but in any event, the uh, so try to use words that make sense. You know, avoid acronyms. Uh, use use terms that are more widely understood. Uh, you know, make sure people understand what you're talking about. Um, you don't want to try to use big words to confuse people. That's for sure. Your education is never complete. And of course, this is good life advice is, uh, you know, we're all constantly learning. But in IT, IT security, especially things are constantly changing. Even things that you're learning in this course are probably already obsolete. Some of the things I talk about, I can tell you for sure that some of the things I talk about are obsolete. You know, we talk about in IT security classes, we talk about a lot of techniques and attacks and things that are very well understood, but there's constantly new attacks and new ways to, um, new ways to infiltrate networks and things like that. And the reason we talk about these well-understood attacks is it's good to study how people take advantage of these vulnerabilities and how people discover these vulnerabilities. We're not necessarily teaching these things because we expect you to find these things in the wild when you start working in the field, but more so to get into the mindset of what we're looking for. Um, so your education is never complete. You're constantly learning. So in the last presentation, which is the next presentation, uh, I'm going to talk more about the HR issues, so more about the human resources issues of hiring and firing and, uh, and so forth.